I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Floor Talk. Joining me today is Leslie Biddle. She is Senior Advisor to the Undersecretary of Infrastructure at the U.S. Department of Energy. Leslie, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. So now, Leslie, with the U.S. needing over $300 billion annually for clean energy and having access to over $400 billion through government initiatives, Tell me, how does the Department of Energy plan to catalyze private sector involvement to bridge the financing gap for the energy transition? Thank you. Thank you for that question. I love that question because it's so important to what we're doing. Everything that we are doing at the Department of Energy really needs to be catalytic. And we have the mandate to work in conjunction with the private sector to bring this energy transition to fruition. So every decision we make, Every project we pick, every program we design has in mind, what do we need to do to de-risk these projects to ensure that the private sector is alongside us and is there when federal funding is no longer available. So it's really a cornerstone to everything we do. Mm -hmm. Now, Leslie, the DOE recently released an RFP for establishing a demand side mechanism for the hydrogen market. Could you explain the reasoning behind this approach and are there other markets or approaches the department is considering in the near future? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we really are here to catalyze the, uh, the private sector. And as we go through the process and specifically in the hydrogen hubs, we realized that the element that was missing to real success and commercialization of the hydrogen market was things that were occurring or not occurring on the demand side. So we have a grants program that really is to instigate the production. So, but we also need the demand side to come in place. So we are working again with the private sector and they are establishing an independent entity. And we're gonna fund that entity with up to a billion dollars. And that billion dollars is meant to provide either contract for differences or other market mechanisms to kind of break the chicken and egg between the supply and demand in the hydrogen market. So we're out on the street now. We have a webinar out um, on uh, the type of entity we're looking for, um, looking to make a decision uh, about that this year. And we really are looking for thoughtful market participants who want to help us really foster um, the nascent hydrogen market. Mm -hmm. Now, the $8 billion hydrogen hub program is set to be announced this fall. Um, tell me, what are the department's goals and expectations for this program, and how will you define its success? Great. Um, so, you know, the, the, what we are trying to achieve is really well laid out in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which was passed in November of 20, uh, 2021. And it establishes that the hubs are really meant to be geographically diverse. They're supposed to have different uh, feedstocks, inputs, so natural gas, nuclear energy, as well as renewable. And it's supposed to be used in different uh, end uses. So industrial, transportation, um, regional, uh, excuse me, um, commercial heating and power. So the rule set is kind of, has, has been established. And then our job is to pick the projects and the regions where it's most likely that these will be successful in the long term. Again, what we're doing differently now from the Department of Energy is we're really looking to create an ecosystem, a full ecosystem and a full economy where these projects can live after the government financing. And so the reason why we chose hubs is because, and the hub concept is to bring the supply and demand together regionally. Transportation of hydrogen long haul is still complex, but we are hoping to develop these these areas, these regions, these hubs, um, which will match, start to bring the supply and demand together. Um, and then hopefully the connective tissue that will ultimately have that grow out to be a, a national, nationwide uh, hydrogen system. Mm -hmm. And finally, Leslie, um, the DOE is taking a unique approach with the transmission finance program. Um, tell me or give me a brief overview of how traditional funding works within the DOE and why TFP was chosen as an alternative method for deploying capital? Great, yeah, thank you. That's also a great question. So, you know, the traditional funding is really grants, grant funding. So we call it equity, but it's really, it's really non-dilutive equity. So there's no expectation of return of return on capital. And that is traditionally um, how DOE incentivize and, and basically de-risk this project. In the transmission finance program, which is under our, um, our grid office, 
we're taking a little bit of a different approach on that. And here we're serving as an anchor tenant. Um, and so we are the offtake. Um, and that allows for the private sector because they know that they have an offtake agreement with the federal government, federal government uh, uh, credit. And that encourages the full funding that's necessary to build out our transmission uh, system across the United States to really come from the private sector with the assurity of payback under um, us uh, being the anchor tenant. So it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic way of leveraging, again, the private sector. Um, it's also a great risk reward for the U.S. taxpayers. So taxpayers are at risk once the project is built. Um, so it really is a way to de-risk the funding um, that's coming from the U.S. taxpayer. And we're very excited about it. All right. Well, Leslie, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.